Hello everyone, it's Duckfairy07. Today we are playing Gruul Breakout Food. Uh, so this deck recently got popular after a great result in the challenge. Uh, so uh, uh, the deck played Teething Wormlets as a green 1-drop uh, that grows when you play uh, Artifact. And uh, I played this deck a lot in the past, uh, Inti, uh, when Inti came out and uh, have a lot of experience with it. I really like channeler in this build so i really wanted to find a build that can support uh, both channeler and breakout and after a few leagues of testing i think i'm now perfectly happy with this with those numbers and my channelers have been working perfectly in this build getting delirium has been very easy and, uh, and i can really say that i'm happy with uh um, uh, with both breakout getting me uh, sufficient targets and the channeler having enough known creature spells to support it and be really a great asset uh, for the deck okay so uh, also i prefer just having this uh, one mana three three haster with when you play it find it with the breakout in comparison to other creatures which are like one one like a wormlet or le let's say whatever that uh, black one drop um, stuff similar stuff okay so uh i think it's much much better of the breakout to find the one mana three three haster and the survey abilities are just like so relevant and uh, since i'm now very happy with a uh, channeler performance in this um, breakout build i think i uh, settled on my perfect 75 okay so initially i had a different sideboard i had these cards in like uh, the usual stuff you always play soul guide lanterns of course graveyard hate pitting needle haver might uh, usual must include uh, cards o also pick your poisons on the sideboard and uh, Bos and Boseju, uh, but uh, I saw uh, people online, including Renan Six and Wandering, in the sideboard of this deck, and I kind of uh, liked that idea. Uh, Renan Six are so great with Boseju post board against decks like popular decks at the moment, like Tron. Uh, amulet and I kind of wanted to play two unholy heats on the sideboard as additional removal this is DRC deck getting delirium is pretty easy so unholy heat is a good option for the sideboard but uh, meta is at the moment kind of mid-rangey and uh, I did cut uh, one inti from the main so I decided to go with two wanderings to bring in the grindy matchups so that's it okay um uh, uh, before we go to the gameplay, uh, let me introduce you to cardelk.com. Uh, they offer offer reusable tokens. I think this is a very cool solution for players like me who ha always have a lot of decks with themselves. I always carry like two commander decks, two modern decks, one uh, pioneer and I need a lot of tokens. It's impossible always to get them. I think this is a very cool solution uh, for um, those purposes. You get a bunch of these uh, empty cardboards which are uh, all sleeveable in all kind of sleeves. Uh, they, uh, you get them with a marker uh, made for them and uh, all these cardboards are like dry erasable so uh, you uh, just draw the token you need. You can create something special if you're good in drawing uh, you can create something very simple um, uh, and ask someone to do it for you uh, whatever you prefer and after you're done you can just uh, uh, dry erase what you had there and just make another token and it's very practical from uh, to switch it like that from the game to game and uh, I'm really a fan of this option for my personal needs so um, uh, that's it. Uh, if you're interested in this product, you can use code DuckFaden10 and um, get 10% discount on this product. Oh, you can find all this information down below in the uh, video description. Uh, if you're interested and also a um, new thing uh, I'm doing is dictionary.com. This is a Patreon-like page where I'm creating additional content. 
Uh, so uh, I'm uh, at the moment uh, there are three uh, sub tires in this medium tire uh, subscription plan. Uh, at the moment I'm offering blue zoo and uh, the regular zoo sideboard guides, and uh, there will be more guides in the future uh, meta game analysis articles, and there will be all available in the highest tire subscription. But a uh, lot of uh, sideboard guides will be available in the medium tire too uh, most of the common ones will be in the medium tire and some more specific um, will be in the in this one and also if you want to show basic support we have that basic tier one tire for subscription also you get uh, you can check out um, my deck vault on mana traders and uh, if you're not joined on the discord you can join and get the discord rules uh, based on your subscription status and that's it okay now we can go to the gameplay and check out how that went okay so uh in game one i finished league 4-1 uh lost the close match against uh, new living end uh new living and the um, lists are pretty pretty fast hard to play against Okay, so here um, I started off with the Underworld Cookbook, sacrifice my Mishra Bubble, start making uh, food tokens. Uh, turn 2 I have uh, Urza Saga into uh, Tarmogoyf, I'm pretty happy with this. So I was playing against Storm, uh, so my chances in game 1 were not that big. And opponent here plays Electromancer, I didn't even have a removal. And they go uh, Morphos, uh, consider another Morphos and uh, just Otavara my Urza Saga. Okay, so uh, I'm fi totally fine with this, they pumping my Mer uh, Goifs a bit. So I went to play another Goif and just start attacking, try to pressure my opponent. Okay, here I got the breakout. And yeah, I was thinking about this play and I find a channeler. Now I have breakout uh, in my uh, graveyard and uh, I wanted to do this before combat so they are forced to block my Goyf, lose their uh, Electromancer and put them really low on life so both of my goifs are lethal next turn i guess opponent didn't find what they were looking for so that was the game i was very unfavored to win this game one but uh, opponent uh, didn't have one of their uh, nut hands and uh, that was it okay so game two i keep uh, survey land and double bubble uh, i have a galvanic blast too uh, so only thing I have to sideboard in this matchup is three uh, graveyard hate pieces, three soul guide lanterns, and so that's it. Uh, I crack uh, both of my bubbles, just um, prepare to play uh, probably Goif on their turn. But opponent goes for Electromancer. I didn't want them to go have some nut uh, to turn three kill, so I decided to kill the Electromancer past the turn. Opponent goes for Baral and don't have any more uh, removal here, so I just pass the turn. Opponent uh, doesn't have the thing, decides to wait, and this means I can now uh, start attacking with uh, Goif, but they went for the Otavara again and just play the tap land, pass the turn. So here I go uh, for uh, land and play my Giganta. I was really hoping to get Breakout or get Inti or get um, uh, Underworld Cookbook so I can play my uh, Asmo and uh, just to kill this Baral. But it didn't happen. I draw into Galvanic Blast, I have my Giganta, opponent uh, with Baral on the field, goes for Morphos, but I guess they're still not ready to combo off, uh, which gives me uh, luckily enough time to try to do something. Okay, so here I go for uh, Ragavan Dash. If opponent uh, blocks, I can uh, finish the Baral with Blast, which is a trade I'm fine with. Opponent uses the Spell Pierce and I decide to pay 2 mana here to kill the Baral. Uh, it's uh, much, much harder for them to combo off without their uh, mana discounting creature, even when they have like 5 mana uh, like now. 
okay, so still uh, attacking here uh, with Giganta. Next turn, I'm playing uh, Goif, and that is basically two two turn. Uh, clock and also now I get uh, the breakout so I can play the breakout uh, I find Inti uh, discard one of my Asmos and I'm able to play other Asmo and uh, Goyf also get the Mox Amber here yeah and uh, so to play my uh, cookbook so I don't have um, much options and I g just pass the turn here. I don't uh, have any anything to do in response. Opponent uh, goes off, tries to do the combo. Uh, they uh, go for the uh, past in flames. Replay a bunch of stuff from the graveyard, and they just failed with grape shot. They should have gone for grape shot phase. Instead, they went double grape shot on my creatures. They went double grape shot on my creatures, which is which was really weird. But okay, and then uh, they had another grape shot, so they definitely had the kill, and they went to kill my creatures, but they also failed in killing my creatures, and they let my goif survive. So uh, and then they conceded. So very weird game against a storm. Okay, so I would probably be in a good position in game 3, but yeah, anyway, uh, that was the end of it. Okay, so uh, let's check out game 2. Match 2, sorry. Okay, again, a mulliganing for a lens. Uh, okay, sorry. I t yeah, okay, this was really funny. I accidentally keep zero lens. This is very funny. I accidentally keep zero lens, but with two bubbles. So uh, if I get a land uh, with two bubbles, there's a good chance of uh, finding another. Okay, so I got got it. Um, uh, seeing a counter spell on opponent's uh, top, and then uh, looking another card, there had a force of negation. So I was really hoping they don't uh, have a removal for my uh, Ragawan. But yeah, opponent has a sign of Draco here. And it's impossible uh, for me to deal with it. I also don't find a second land and uh, I had to concede immediately. There's, there was just no chance. Uh, it was uh, it was accidental keep with zero lands. And I actually got the land on top but didn't get a second one. Despite two uh, bubbles. Okay, so here opponent again started with Leyline. Uh, but uh, now I was playing first. I have uh, Ragawan. I have... Urza Saga, and if you have uh, like Goyf plus uh, Shadow Spear, you can often just uh, successfully uh, fight um, Sion plus Leyline. Uh, so here I started off with Goyf. I uh, was, I, my uh, what I was. Uh, expecting to happen here was like I play uh, uh, probably have to play pick your poison next turn so I decided to play my Urza Saga on turn 3 and then I play pick your poison I could have holded this to kill the Sion but I decided to let make them sacrifice enchantment maybe that wasn't a good idea okay but uh, I was able to start attacking through Sion here and if you have, as I said, if you have a uh, Goyf plus a Shadow Spear, you can even raise uh, a Scion with Leyline sometimes. And here I played uh, Asmo, and I still had enough mana to uh, create a Construct Token. Okay, so I find my cookbook, make a Construct Token, opponent. Uh, uh, of course attacking with a Scion uh, at the moment I'm on 10 this is a blue zoo version so they don't uh, uh, they probably don't have uh, stuff like tribal flames okay so uh, here I find Buseju but I also find Havar Might with uh, my Saga you can see my sideboarding plan that I've uh, boarded in Mites, I boarded in Pick Your Poisons, uh, Bosages, all the artifact uh, hate and enchantment hate I had on the sideboard. Trim some cards like uh, all the breakouts 
I trimmed all the breakouts because I brought in so much of the um, heat pieces and then I also uh, decided out the channelers because I needed so much of these cards uh, in my main and uh, so uh, the channelers are a bit weaker without breakout being a sorcery uh, if and uh, since I'm lowering the uh, non-creature count I decided to cut both of these cards completely okay so here uh, I put my opponent on three life maybe maybe it was a bit risky play I could play safer but uh, yeah uh, that was the game, I got that one, so we can now check out the game tree. Okay, so uh, opponent starts off with Ragawan. I have a decent hand, but I can't uh, really... Um, I can't... Uh, do anything about Ragawan hitting me. I leave... Uh, I leave um, one ring on top, but opponent didn't uh, attack me. So I was able to play the Urza Saga, play my Tarmogoyf, and hoping to get a third land next turn, or just play the Inti and uh, try to dig for land. I had multiple options here, I decided to go for Inti and just... Um, uh, just at, to start attacking with Goif. I have Inti in the blockers. I can trade with uh, with uh, with the Ragavan if needed, and that's exactly what happened. Here I got uh, that third land I needed, and uh, bring brought back my uh, Daredevil, and I have a very large Goif attacking here for a lot of damage. So um, good cards in my hand. Asmo and uh, Daredevil. Here I decide to go for uh, Vrenon 6. Uh, ping them a face. Okay, so my opponent uh, can't uh, sh can't use a shock or what uh, some stuff like that. Also, they spent a turn attacking my uh, Vrenon 6. So uh, now I was counting on them playing the Leyland Binding and taking. Uh, they have to take my uh, Goyf here to survive. So I was uh, able to just uh, play another Renan 6 and safely just deploy both Renan 6 and Asmo in play, kill the Territorial Cabo, present another uh, lethal attacker for the next turn. Find another cookbook, it's just uh, I can't lose from this situation. Opponent uh, concedes and that was the match. Okay, so let's check out uh, match number three. Okay, so pretty decent hand. Uh, Mox Amber can be really good uh, in this type of starts. When you have a uh, underworld cookbook, it's really crazy, crazy, crazy start here. Turn one, Mox uh, Ragavan uh, cookbook uh, with Overchills Daredevil in hand. That's like really powerful. Okay, so here I um, I play turn two breakout and find a uh, Asmo. Put Asmo in the field with uh, Overchills Daredevil in my hand and uh, underworld cookbook uh, in the field, finding a second cookbook. A really really strong position um, okay so yeah I find another cookbook uh, make uh, more food and start attacking uh, with Asmo okay opponent plays automaton I can just kill this guy for free pay two mana for the ability uh, very easy okay so uh, also, I uh, fetch for the commercial district to surveil one, check the top of my library, continue attacking. Opponent now uh, finds a pitting needle, plays a hangerback walker and ozolith. A uh, lot of good cards there. Uh, I Since uh, my cookbooks are needled, I can uh, now play my daredevil as attacker. Finding a tarmogoyf on top. 
my opponent uh, plays uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. They have Walking Ballista in the graveyard. Uh, I let them use the hanger back and then use my uh, Asmo in response to their uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron ability. They get counters on the Ozolith. Uh, I play my Goif, but uh, yeah, they got the they got the Welding Jar. They got the Hardened Scales and uh, counters from the Ozolith. A lot of counters on Ravager, making my job here a lot lot difficult. Okay, so I'm still in game. I can uh, try to do something, uh, putting Daredevil in the yard, find it, getting back my Asmo, replaying the Asmo, but uh, I can now try to kill something, but they have Ravager, so it's not really going to uh, be easy. They need, need, they can always just sack two stuff and uh, two artifacts and just uh, make my Asmo useless so they now have too much stuff I can't really do much anymore so that is the game uh, for my opponent uh, let's check out game 2 a lot of useful stuff on the sideboard I have Pitting Needle I have a Havar Might I have uh, 3 uh, Pick Your Poisons I uh, have both Sages and uh, Vrenin 6 and again, uh, I need all my cyborg cards as what I counted. So I remove the breakout channeler package and the mox ember uh, to find spots for it. Okay, so uh, I uh, my opponent starts off with lantern. I start off with uh, Inti plus a cookbook, a great uh, combo. Uh, finding me a lot of cards. I have two channelers which was ideal against their uh, soul guide lantern so I forced them to uh, crack a lantern but I still have another uh, daredevil which is very nice. Uh, I uh, start attacking with Inti here. My opponent already on 11. Unfortunately I had to play my Boseju so I didn't have Boseju available here but um, I'm in a great position. Opponent attacking my uh, Renin 6. I'm doing a lot of these uh, Inti abilities. I'm uh, going for another Inti attack, uh, discarding a card, finding uh, Asmo, and now I can again kill the Automaton for free. And opponent knows that is game over, so they concede, and that is uh, that is the game. Let's check out the game three. Okay, so uh, in the game three, definitely harder playing a second, but my hand was pretty good. Okay, uh, also same sideboard. Uh, you can see that I uh, cut some Galvanic Blasts. Uh, two of them leave two of them in the deck. Uh, I really pick your poisons and uh, artifact enchantment hate is really the main thing here. And Galvanic Blasts can be decent, but also. Uh, sometimes not ideal. Okay, I had some options here, but I decided not to kill the Urza Saga, but to kill the Automaton. Uh, it was, uh, if I waited, the Automaton would become too large, I would not be able to deal with it anymore. Okay, so here, next turn, I was able to kill Urza Saga with my Boseju for one mana, and then a Galvanic Blast, the Zabaz, while a hanger back was uh, in the yard and uh, okay now my opponent is attacking me in the air for two but I have double Tarmogoyf to race with them so pretty happy with that opponent continues attacking and now I can finally start uh, doing some uh, Tarmogoyf damage and now I played my Goyf, played the cookbook and start making the food tokens the food tokens mean that I'll be able to get uh, to gain uh, Three life every at least three life every turn. So um, yeah, opponent. I think they accidentally attacked with ballista here, but they got me down to six, and they're now on zero cards in, in their hand, which basically means zero chance for them to do anything. And uh, yeah, here I gained a six life attack for twelve. Put my opponent basically to le lethal damage next turn, so they got to block. Uh, I uh, just continue gaining uh, life here. I surveilled another Goyf on top of my library. Um, crack food to gain more life. Opponent double blocks with Inkmot Nexuses. 
making my uh, goifs 2-2 uh, I gain three more life so definitely winning this race there is just uh, nothing my opponent can draw at this point um, so that is a uh, game over they were able to survive another turn of course but uh, they don't really have uh, a chance here okay, opponent draws a card for a turn and concedes that is the match okay so let's check out uh, match number four Okay, uh, pretty great hand, I would say. I have uh, multiple options. I can go for cookbook on turn one, start doing the food tokens. I decide to uh, risk your play to go for the galvanic blast on turn two, but my opponent saves their soul scar mage with mutagenic growth. But it's better for them to use it defensively than uh, attack me for a lot of damage with it. Okay, so here opponent uh, goes for the attack. Again, I have multiple options. Uh, when I untap, I play my uh, forest. Um, I play my uh, Asmo, find another cookbook. And next turn, I can play uh, another cookbook and uh, Goif. Opponent finds a uh, Spire Bluff Canal here, attacks me with... Uh, Soul Scar Mage for another two damage here. Okay, so uh, my opponent didn't find a bolt. Uh, probably they were looking for bolt, didn't find it, and now I was able to just freely kill their creatures using my Asmo. And after this happens, uh, my opponent's chances are like really low to do anything. So it was super super easy from this point. I just kill their uh, all their creatures and it's impossible for them to win without creatures also goif is a great blocker against them opponent uh, plays iteration finds a sith spear passes the turn again i can just kill a sith spear for free and uh, continue attacking now i can also play uh, the breakout finding the dragon ray channeler and making a construct putting my opponent down to um, two life very very three life very low on life opponent has a breach into sea spear but there's just nothing much else they can do here so that is the game let's check out game two okay so let's check the sideboarding plan for the Proves matchup okay only thing i wanted uh, in this matchup is soul guide lanterns against their uh, underworld breach so no uh, much other changes uh, they play lava darts so i trimmed a few couple of my uh, raga ones and trimmed one breakout when trimming on creatures so and that's basically it only change uh, opponent offers a trade for channeler there but i don't take it uh, i i had options to trigger my channeler multiple times next turn so i really wanted to try to find that uh, third land i go for governing blast but opponent uses uh, the growth to save their channeler okay so i go for uh, the soul guide lantern um, hate on their graveyard and uh, just continue attacking On my opponent's turn, they uh, play Pick Your Poison, kills my uh, Urza Saga. That was a problem, but at least now my channeler is a 3 3, so I can uh, attack them uh, with the 3 3 flyer, play my uh, Tarmagoyf as a great, great blocker. In this situation, they only have 3 cards at the moment, but they play Vapor Snag. Uh, uh, bounce my uh, goif back to my hand attack me for five damage put me in the danger zone uh, for uh, but uh, that's why i decide to use my uh, spire bluff canal opponent uh, finds a pick your poison to kill my channeler okay so i'm in a kind of a problem here i play uh, the biggest creature i have uh, they don't have delirium so they can't attack in the air and uh, Goif is very good blocker for the Sea Spear so my opponent stays back for a turn, doesn't play anything. 
I can uh, of course stay back with uh, Tarmagoyf just uh, protect uh, protect myself but I decide to uh, attack uh, give him a trample attack make him uh, turn to turn clock it didn't seem like my opponent has anything relevant and they went for the attacks here what was that card I'm not sure what was that card oh when when it deals damage Destroy target artifact I control. Okay, it wasn't very useful, uh, but here I attack uh, with both of my creatures. Give uh, go with a trample, and that is a lethal damage and win in this match. Okay, so let's now check the game against a living end. Um, is this uh, I, is this a Nassif account? Maybe. Could be, I uh, probably it is because he's playing um, a living end. Okay, so I keep um, I keep a five. I, I mulligan to five here, unfortunately, but I keep a land that is pretty good. Uh, Underworld cookbook into uh, Inti on turn two with Saga. That is pretty decent, um, decent plan. So. Uh, Living End is not really common, so people rarely play like Graveyard Hate in the main. But Gorios is common, so uh, there it is a reason to uh, potentially play uh, a card like that in the main. Okay, so here I was attacking with Inti, uh, my opponent already on a 10 life, and I go for the breakout. I find uh, Goif. Goif is pretty large, so basically uh, next turn I have lethal. My opponent has to go for a uh, living end. If they don't have it, they will just die. But uh, they do have. Uh, it is a turn three, and they have a Bloodbraid Marauder for a lot of lot of creatures in the yard. And I can immediately can see there's just nothing I can do there. Uh, of course, for the sideboard, I only want my uh, my Soul Guide Lanterns from the side. Uh, I uh, trimmed uh, on uh, Mishra Bubble, trimmed on a Shadow Spear and one Galvanic Blast. Okay, so I had a good start, no hit pieces, but I have a turn 1 Ragawan, I have a turn 2 a Saga into uh, Goif, into the cookbook. Okay, so um, cookbook can be great against a Living End. So they're always trying to counter this if they can, as you can see. Okay, so uh, opponent uh, already has um, Delirium. They can go for uh, Marauder, but they're stuck on lands at the moment. So they're just filling the graveyard. I present a lethal for the next turn, double Goif, and they don't find a land. And that is a game over in game two. So let's check out game three. Um, game 3 I actually had pretty pretty good hand I would say a double bubble soul guide plus land it's not a it unfortunately this wasn't a color land if it was like a stomping ground I think I would definitely win this one but here I was uh, able to like play double bubble so that is uh, three cards next turn so I had a uh, good chances of drawing uh, the land I need I need only a single stomping ground in situation like this just to play out my Goif and the Goif will win the game by itself but unfortunately that didn't uh, go well okay so here I was forced to crack the soul guide lantern uh, exile the graveyard which slows them down significantly but uh, it it was all fine and i resolved my uh, cookbook and i find another urza saga but i can't find a color land to give me mana to play the goif or anything and yeah until the end of the game all i got was a bunch of these uh, soul guide lanterns and the urza sagas but no uh, mana to play my spells and yeah definitely felt like unfortunate game i digged for six more cards and still didn't find 
uh, what I was looking for, but I discarded the Goyf here and opponent had Legion's End to deal with it. Okay, so here uh, I now at this point I don't have any more mana. I decided not to, uh, maybe I should have gone for uh, Misha Bubble at this point, try to find that land. But yeah, my opponent just uh, hard casted the Marauders and slowly attacked me with Marauders. I had a bunch of creatures which I could uh, play and just trade with the Marauders, but uh, that did not happen. I did not draw a land until end of the game of 43 cards in the library, so I went through the 17 cards. And my opponent finally hard cast the Master of Ways. And I still didn't find a single land, so that is game over. Um, okay, it was the only loss in this league actually, and uh, it was only because of the unluck of not finding the a single, a single fetch, a single stomping ground, a single any land in the deck to play the Goyf and uh, try to win with the Goyf or Ragavan, whatever. Uh, no help there. Okay, so that was it, uh, but uh, I'm pretty happy with how uh, the channeler uh, and the breakout worked in this deck. Um, I think uh, 18 spells is uh, uh, the lowest I would play with uh, in a channeler deck and uh, 22 creatures is also like uh, the lowest I would play for the breakout deck unless I have uh, some other uh, uh, stuff going on, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, this uh, build. Uh, pretty happy with how it's working, and I think uh, it. I think it's a good way to play the deck, and uh, probably among the most powerful. But uh, as you can see, against this kind of deck, uh, against the graveyard deck, against the combo, you don't uh, have much in game one. So may I maybe I would consider ad playing just as, uh, instead of the Mox Amber, which is not crucial uh, for the main, I would consider playing a single a Soul Guide Lantern instead. Uh, it can greatly help in the Gorios matchup, in the uh, like a store matchup or um, like this one against a Living End. But Living End is not really a common uh, matchup right now. Uh, people rarely play it, so uh, okay, so there's definitely that, and uh, that's it. But um, another option for the sideboards, as I already mentioned before, are unholy hits. Uh, but I think uh, one ring is also a good sideboard option uh, in the grindier meta game. Uh, once you resolve this against decks like uh, Merktide, uh, Jund. Uh, they can't really keep up and uh, the one ring will definitely win uh, if you have a lot of food to gain life and the shadow spear so yeah as i said these are two options to consider and um, of course as i mentioned in the beginning fort inti also something to consider instead of fort daredevil i at the moment i like a fort daredevil more and feel like three inti is fine but uh, definitely uh, I can see uh, doing this differently. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about uh, Teething Vermelet instead of uh, the Dragon Ray Channeler. I really really prefer, uh, prefer Channeler by a lot uh, in this uh, strategy. I think it's a superior creature, superior breakout target. And I would consider playing a Vermelet in... Uh, in the in the list without um, uh, that plays a lot less non-creature spells uh, if that doesn't play a breakout uh, if i didn't play breakout i would consider uh, getting uh, the wormlet but in this build i really do prefer the channelers i think they are good and in this deck and uh, really really uh, like it in this archetype a lot so that is it uh, for today again uh, just a, a friendly reminder to click like and subscribe and again thanks for watching and goodbye